Hi, folks. This is Craig Van Slyke. Welcome to the Rational Ignorance Podcast, where we talk about ideas, values, and living life well. Hi, I'm Andrea Christel, a philosopher and outdoor enthusiast who lives in Sedona, Arizona. And I'm a business professor, author, and rancher who lives in the middle of the woods in Eris, Louisiana. We're here to have fun, interesting conversations that help us get to the heart of what it means to live a good life. Rational ignorance is an idea from economics that basically means there is a limit to what we need to know. So we'll skip the small stuff and focus on what really matters and help you move towards a flourishing life. Before getting into today's episode, I wanted to tell you about a few upcoming changes here at the Rational Ignorance Podcast. Due to other commitments, Andrea needs to step away from the podcast for a while. She'll still join me as her time allows, but mostly I'll be solo. Of course, this changes the nature of the podcast a little bit, but I still hope to relate information that will make you think. We're also changing our name. Although I truly love the expression rational ignorance, it just doesn't fit our new focus on how to live a flourishing life. So we're going to change our name. Our new name will be Live Well and Flourish. If you're currently subscribed to Rational Ignorance, you shouldn't have to do anything at all to subscribe to Live Well and Flourish. The name change will take effect in a couple of weeks. All right, enough of the changes. Let's get to the real content. I'm recording this episode one week after my mother passed away at the age of 97. She lived independently in a very nice senior living complex until a couple of weeks before she died. She lived a full life right up until the very end. She was socially active with many friends that she saw and dined with daily. She went to exercise classes two or three times a week and worked with a physical therapist weekly. Even though she was almost blind, she still enjoyed reading and still did her daily Bible readings every evening. Mom was still mentally quite sharp. She could hear a joke and then retell it the next day. She still had a good sense of humor and could still get my jokes or at least laugh politely. In short, she had a full life despite her advanced age. I called her every day just to see how she was and to tell her about the latest craziness here on the ranch. I'll miss that as an important part of my life. She died suddenly. I talked to her the day she suffered a massive stroke, and our conversation was normal. Sometime that night, she suffered her stroke and died the next day. Her death was an odd combination of expected, after all, she was 97, and a shock, and her passing will certainly leave a void in my life. Mom's passing made me reflect on the significant losses I've experienced over the years. My father over 20 years ago, my first wife, Debbie, 15 years ago, and more recently, my younger brother, Glenn, and now Mom. Each of these losses changed my life in irreversible ways, and with each, there was grief. Being the pondering sort, my mother's death made me reflect on how these losses affected me and my life, beyond the obvious sense of loss and grief. During these reflections, something surprising came to me there can be gratitude and grief. Before going further, I want to frame this discussion by telling you that I believe in the eternity of the soul. I know there's no empirical evidence for it. A lot of you may find it irrational, but that's what I believe. I think there's some element of us that goes on after we physically die. Mom was a Christian uh, and, and was a practicing Christian and a very good person her entire life, so if there's a heaven, I'm sure she's there now. Who knows how exact, how this works exactly, and I obviously can't prove any of this, but I believe that we all have a soul that's timeless and enduring. I'm not sure that this really matters for what I'm going to lay out for you, but it felt important to disclose my perspective. At the core of my thinking about grief and gratitude is that we grieve because of the loss. I know this is kind of obvious, but here's the part that's maybe not so obvious. We grieve because of what we've gained from the person we lost. If we had not gained anything from that person, I'm not so sure that we'd feel very much of a sense of loss and we probably wouldn't grieve a whole lot. You know, that person, your loved one that you grieve, touched your life in some meaningful way, in some positive way. Your life was better for knowing the person. Otherwise, I just don't think you'd grieve all that much, or at least not for long. I know that we can grieve the loss of someone we didn't know, but I'm talking about a more personal sort of grief here as in the grief we feel when losing someone close. So at the core of grief is a sense of loss, and the core of that sense of loss is the way the person touched your life. And you should be grateful for the way your loved one affected your life. The grief is triggered by the same thing that should trigger a sense of gratitude. Of course, it's important to recognize your grief, but it's equally important to recognize your gratitude. And kind of a yin and yang thing, grief without gratitude is simply incomplete. 
and that incompleteness can lead to the grief continuing unabated for longer than necessary. This doesn't mean that you shouldn't feel sad, very sad, at the loss of someone you loved. All I'm saying is you shouldn't lose sight of the gratitude you ought to feel for your good fortune for having that person in your life. For me, this was really driven home when I lost Debbie. She was only 46 when she died, and she'd been battling cancer for two and a half years. The whole situation was just tragic and traumatic. Uh, Debbie and I went to high school together. We were friends, but we didn't date. We re-met, if you will, at our 10-year class reunion. I'm not sure it was love at first sight, but it was pretty close. Frankly, by that time in my life, I'd come to the conclusion that I might not ever marry, and I was okay with that future. But that all changed the night of the reunion. We dated, did a long-distance dating thing for a while, and got married. We bought a house and settled into a very nice life. Fast forward a few years later, and Debbie's gone. Did I grieve? Yeah, you bet I did. A lot. But throughout my grief, I remember being eternally grateful that I was with Debbie, even if the time was brief. At the time, I remember thinking that the grief was a payment for having her in my life. And I don't care how you slice it, that was a bargain. When Debbie died, this odd sense of gratitude helped me get through the long days and nights without her. I was lucky a second time when I met and married Tracy, and I'm equally grateful for her. I'm grateful for my mother in more ways than I can relate in a short podcast episode. She was an excellent mom, she and my dad raised us well, and that upbringing is a reason I've become who I am today, and I don't know, this may sound a little arrogant, but I think I'm a pretty decent guy. All of this may sound cliche, but in this case it's absolutely true. My parents taught me and my brothers how to be good people. I'm also grateful for the model she provided for getting through life. She always did her best to do what was right, even if it was costly to her in some way. She was a caring person who lived about as virtuous a life as could possibly be lived. She was kind, generous, smart, along with many other good characteristics. She taught me how to face life's inevitable challenges with grace, dignity, and determination. Although she wouldn't have called herself this, in many ways she was a classic stoic. She spent little time bemoaning the difficulties that we face in life. She simply got through them. To put it bluntly, I would be a lesser man if she hadn't been my mother. So what do I do now? How do I get through the loss of my mother? I can't control the loss. It's happened. She's gone. But what I can control is how I think about the loss of my mother. Not that I'm the wailing type, but I can wail over the sad fact that I'll never get to talk to her again or never get to see her or never have lunch with her, never tell her a joke. Or I can focus on the great gift I received for having her in my life for as long as I did. So how do we get through this kind of grief? Well, it all comes down to changing your perspective. So in times of loss, you might not think that you can shift your perspective from the loss to the gratitude, but you can. The shift isn't quick and it isn't easy, but it's possible. Keep in mind that I'm not an expert in grief. Um, My doctorate is not in anything related to grief counseling or or, uh, psychology or anything like that. So what follows is what I've learned from my own experience, pain, and reflection. These are things that help me, and I share them in the hope that they may help you. However, if you're dealing with grief, don't be reluctant to get help from professionals. Mental health professionals are really good at helping people going through difficult times, and they can be a huge help to you. So really, don't hesitate to reach out to to someone if you need help in dealing with grief. So here's a quote that frames the whole thing for me and expresses why gratitude is just so important when you're going through grief. This is from Seneca, one of my favorite Stoics, and he wrote, Let us see to it that the recollection of those whom we have lost becomes a pleasant memory for us. For I have had them as if I should one day lose them. I have lost them as if I had them still. Now, some of you may be thinking reasonably that this sounds like one of those great in theory, tough in practice kind of things, and and it is. But that doesn't mean that it can't help. And there are some things that you can put into practice that can help you deal with current grief and prepare for future loss. First, though, let's talk a little bit about grief. Grief is universal and intensely personal. You can support me through my grief, but you cannot take it from me. It is my grief, and I must deal with it. And when you're grieving, it's your grief, and you must deal with it. Grief is a reaction to loss. 
It's also a process of adaptation to life without whatever you've lost, such as a loved one. When you lose a loved one, someone you cared about is gone, and you need to figure out a way to get through life without them. This is, of course, a difficult adaptation. Grief is also a reminder of our own mortality. There's an old Latin expression, memento mori, that essentially means remember death, a reminder that we're all mortal. The loss of someone close to us can trigger memento mori. Such reminders can be jarring, although they also have a silver lining of sorts. Gratitude in the face of death is a way to practice this memento mori. You keep death close in order to make life sweeter. Look, let's face it, death is inevitable. We all start dying the day we're born. And death can come swiftly and unexpectedly. Every day, we read or hear about someone who's died suddenly. Somebody gets in their car to go to work, gets in a terrible traffic accident, doesn't ever make it. If it can happen to them, it can happen to us. So we should exercise our personal agency to live the best life we can while we can. And gratitude is an important part of living a good life. Sometimes grief is an expression of regret and guilt, especially when the loss is unexpected. I can't tell you how glad I am that I called mom the day she had her stroke. I can't even imagine the guilt and regret I would have felt if I would have thought, you know, I'm just too busy to call her today. I'll call her tomorrow. Good Lord, that would have been awful. Grief can also be a reminder to avoid future regret. So now, if I don't pick up the phone and call somebody because I just don't feel like it, you know, in the back of my mind somewhere, there'll be, what if you hadn't called mom? Then hopefully I'll pick up the phone or do whatever it is that needs to be done. One way to avoid that future regret is to constantly remind yourself of how fortunate you are to have your loved ones in your life. Keep this gratitude in the forefront, and you're more likely to express that gratitude while there's time, thus avoiding future regret. I think grief is also a result of an imbalance. We feel a deep sense of loss, and this knocks our lives out of whack. It puts us out of balance. So to deal with the grief, we need to do something to put the scales right. Gratitude can help here as well. Bringing my gratitude to the surface can help me assuage grief by restoring that psychic balance. I try to focus on all the good that came to my life because of the one I've lost. Remember all of the good things, the things that they added to my life. And keep in mind that we grieve because we've lost that. The grief literally comes from the good things that they brought to our lives. And the greater the feeling of loss, the more we've gained from knowing the loved one. Acknowledge these gains with gratitude. This can help balance those scales so that the grief is not crushing. Acknowledging the impermanence of life and everything on earth also helps in dealing with grief. To paraphrase some philosopher at the moment, I don't remember exactly who, everything is on loan from fortune. What fortune brings, fortune takes away. Nothing is really ours, including those we love. So rather than focusing on the loss of someone who is never really ours, we can be grateful for the time that we had with that person, whether that time was short or long. Another thought occurred to me when I pondered my mother's death. Either mom was going to die before me or I was going to die before her. You know, I suppose we could have died at the same time, but that's really not very likely. So should I wish that she suffered through the anguish of the loss of another son? No, of course not. But that's the alternative to me losing her. So in this way, her death was an oddly positive event. I mean, I suffer her loss, but she doesn't have to go through the loss of another son. If you really care about someone, Shouldn't you be willing to take on suffering in their stead? Be grateful that you were able to prevent their pain, not that you had anything to do with their death, but you're, in a way, taking on the pain that they would have felt at your loss. I know that sounds pretty odd, but I really do think it's true. So let's take a look at what we can do to prepare for future grief. I want to talk about three things you can do now that can help you prepare for grief down the road. And let's face it. If you live a very long life, you're going to experience grief, and you're going to experience it many times. So why not prepare for it? So the first first thing you can do is to dig the gratitude well before you're thirsty. I'm paraphrasing Jordan Harbinger, one of my favorite podcasters there. So reflect regularly on the gratitude you should have for the ones you love. This will give you a store of gratitude, if you will, that you can draw on in times of grief and loss. 
It will also help remind you to express that gratitude to your loved ones while you can. That's the second point I want to make about what you can do now. Don't just feel the gratitude, express it. It's really great to feel gratitude and recognize it, but it's even better to genuinely express those feelings of gratitude. This will not only make your loved one feel good, it'll also bring about a sort of social reciprocity by reminding them that they should feel grateful for you. Expressing gratitude also builds social bonds, and these can help you when you need help. Uh, These social bonds can become support resources during your times of difficulty and grief. So telling your friends that you appreciate them not only benefits them, it benefits you as well. Let's take this a step further. That gratefulness will help you become more resilient. There's some empirical evidence that indicates that uh, grateful people tend to be more resilient in difficult times. Uh, Nobody knows exactly how this operates, but there is empirical evidence that links gratitude to resilience and also to post-crisis coping. In any case, expressing gratitude is a pretty low-cost endeavor, so the return on that investment is likely to be pretty large. Then my third piece of advice is to call your mom. If you're lucky enough to still have your parents, call them and thank them for what they've done for you. If, like me, your parents are gone, call someone else you care about and express your gratitude that they're in your life. Make it a point to contact someone every day just to thank them. Don't ask them for anything. Just thank them. This will dig your gratitude well, well before you're thirsty, but it will also, over time, make you a genuinely more grateful person. Being grateful will just become part of your being. In a future episode, I'll talk about the many benefits of gratefulness, but for now, just trust me that the benefits of gratefulness are many. So, start yourself down the path of making gratefulness part of your being. I think that's enough for today. I want to express my gratitude in you taking the time to listen to our podcast. And I would like to ask a small favor. Drop me a line. Send me an email. You can send it to rationalignorance at pm.me. That's rationalignorance at paulmary.m as in Mary E. And let me know that you've listened to this and let me know your thoughts, where you think I'm right, where you think I'm wrong. I would truly appreciate it if you did that. And then in closing, appreciate your loved ones while you can. And if she's still alive, call your mom. Thank you. The Rational Ignorance Podcast is sponsored by Sedona Philosophy, a completely unique tour company that uses Sedona's amazing natural environment to unlock personal growth and insight. Explore nature, culture, and history with a philosophical twist. Visit SedonaPhilosophy.com to learn more. Thanks, Craig. If you enjoyed this podcast, hit the subscribe button. Please rate, review, and tell your friends. Until next time.